Hey guys, how you doing? I don't know if this video is going to be put up on YouTube. Uh, I make a lot of videos that I don't end up uploading. Uh, and the reason why I do that is because I like I enjoy making videos, I like practicing and sharing my thoughts, and then sometimes I decide uh, I'm not going to upload a video. Maybe that's maybe I'm missing out, maybe some of the videos could have gone viral. Um, but that's life, that's, there's no problem, that's fine. So in this video I just want to kind of like share my thoughts and just talk about many different things that I find interesting uh, about people, about success, about life, about discipline. Yeah, just more about thought sharing, thought provoking video and to just see it, just see what happens, see how it comes out. Probably will help a lot of people if I upload it. So the first thing actually I want to talk about is um, discipline. Fascinated with discipline. I used to hate discipline um, when I was younger, about 15 years ago. I associated discipline as punishment and it's totally changed for me now. Now I, I, really, I really respect and understand the beauty of discipline and the real essence behind discipline and why discipline really has its place in the world. Now I can explain it in just simple, simple everyday terms you know, that relate to any person. So first and foremost, when I was younger, I didn't like, you know, like tidying my bedroom, cleaning up, washing up. Now, I actually enjoy doing these things as I'm an adult because if I don't do these things, I feel awful leaving the place in a mess. I, I don't feel hygienic, don't feel good about myself. And I think it's kind of like a lack of respect for yourself and kind of other people. It's like a bad attitude. But I didn't get that years ago and I think most people don't, especially young men. So for me... Discipline is about sometimes doing things that you don't initially feel like doing, but you have to do them because you have to do them. If you don't do them, then there's going to be a very negative consequence for you and other people. So I love the challenge of um, being disciplined in life, and that can start off with anything from cleaning the flat to going to the gym or going and talking to people when you might not feel like it, or going and helping someone you might not feel like it, or making a YouTube video. Today I do feel like it, but there's days, obviously I'm human, that I might not feel like doing a video, or speaking, or sharing thoughts. And the after effects of, of being disciplined and taking action in your life, is first and foremost, you know, like externally, however that shows up, whether that's more money, more success, more recognition from people, more respect, making a difference to other people, being famous, whatever, those areas. But the actual kind of hidden success, how it personally makes me feel and how it would make you feel, how it makes others feel, is such a satisfying feeling. I'm not sure if I'd go so far, so it, it, it definitely does make me happy, but it's even better. There's a feeling of satisfaction. You, you feel that feeling of guilt and shame or like you're doing something wrong or you're not showing up. Or, you know a lot of that goes away and there's a great feeling after where then you can go and do you know then you can kind of you can then you can slack off if you want because you've been disciplined like you've paid your dues it's very psychological I'm imagining uh, it's probably quite a Freudian thing and it's also I'm um, intelligent enough to realize it's a human thing it probably dates back to tribal times there is something intrinsically admirable about being disciplined and people do admire it you know whether people like you or not you can't fault someone who's disciplined when I see someone who's in the army and getting up every day at five in the morning you can't help maybe you don't want to be in the army but you respect the toughness that takes because you know yourself how hard that is for you in any area when you see someone with a good physique who puts in hours of training you know an athlete or a boxer or just you know average Joe vlogs I have a respect for them. So I practice discipline every single day because it really helps me to clear up my past with the times where I wasn't disciplined and I felt so bad for not being disciplined and it affected my results in every area. So discipline really does build a good character because it really does attribute to strength and weakness. A lot of people just can't find the strength to be disciplined. They struggle to get out of bed. They can't go to the gym because they tell themselves that and they choose not to go to the gym. So discipline is about choices you know, on, on a daily basis. And I, I like it because there's always an opportunity to practice it. And it's not like, yeah, I am obsessive with it, obsessive with it but there, you know, there is a time where you can have a break. So I'm not saying, oh, you can never have a, a Chinese meal or, or a 
bit of takeaway. I'm not getting all silly about things, but generally, disciplined people are more successful. That's a fact. So unsuccessful people, they seriously lack discipline. They're not disciplined, otherwise they wouldn't be unsuccessful. So I gave you some examples of discipline. Then there's other types of discipline, or maybe there's one type, there's just different areas, and I'm explaining them, breaking them down. The discipline to respond when you get rejected in life. So if you get rejected in a relationship, or if you get rejected in your business, or if you get rejected in university, or you don't get a job, or if something doesn't go to plan, we don't get the reaction you want. It takes a lot of strength and discipline to not quit and let that hurt your feelings and come back from it and keep going until you succeed. So I find that fascinating. The, the good thing is there is always hope for everyone because someone who lacks discipline and who's really struggling, they can train and become disciplined because that's what I did. I know that for a fact from first-hand experience. And then I started to teach people all around the world and coach people. But I don't want to talk too much about that in the video. It's not relevant, I find, for today. So that's the first thing I really wanted to share my feelings. The second thing I want to talk about is something that actually really annoys me in people. It really annoys me and upsets me. And I suppose it used to annoy me that about myself, having changed it. And I find, and I've found this with, again, just you know, men and women, there are certain types of people that they just, they just can't admit that they're wrong. Like They just will never be honest about their insecurities. And I find that really irritating and annoying. I find those people very hard to connect with and build relationships. So they've clearly got issues, as we all have. They clearly have fears and insecurities, as everyone has. I have. Every, it doesn't matter. Even when you become successful, you still have issues. That's something that I was not aware of. When I wasn't successful, I thought successful people don't get anxiety. They don't have issues. They don't have fears, they don't have negative inner voices telling them they're not good enough. Then when I became successful, I still got all those insecurities that I had before I was successful. But obviously the difference was I'd become confident, I'd become victorious and succeeded in um, my goals. But nonetheless, the fears and the insecurities, still, they're still there. It's just the way you, how you handle them. But I've encountered people that... As soon as you bring up any sort of, and not in a critical way, as soon as you try to bring up, as soon as you get them to look at themselves in a positive way, they really reject it. They they almost they attack you for it, and they and they deny it and say they haven't got fears. And you realise, of course, they have got fears, because the same people who say they haven't got fears complain that they don't like their job. So that's obviously a fear, because if you didn't like your job and you keep complaining that you're not happy. Why won't you change your job and do a job that you like? Because you're scared, you're fearful to. So there we found the fear. I'm a, I'm, I'm a fear finder. So you can't bullshit. You, it's an Irish saying, you can't bullshit a bullshit. I used to bullshit myself and lie about my fears and insecurities to, to try and impress people and hide and get approval and acceptance. When that got to a point where that didn't work anymore, that was too painful. When, I, when you stop hiding it, it's actually you, you actually become more confident. So I think more confident people are 100% more disciplined. They're much more honest about their fears and insecurities. Every successful person right now on the internet, me included, whether we're conscious of this or not, we're all telling the truth about our insecurities and fears. And we're, we're, the, the story is kind of the same. It's basically saying we were scared, we were insecure, just like all of our followers or fans or people. We got to a breaking point where we were so depressed we had, we had mental health problems. We couldn't stand lying to ourselves anymore, lying to the world. So we decided to first admit it and say, I have got anxiety. I have got issues. I am depressed. I am worried. I am fearful. I do lack confidence. I do worry about what people think about me. I'm now going to face my demons and fears. And I want to I overcome this as best as I can. And it's in, it's in facing your own personal fears and insecurities and having the discipline to do that that actually helps you to be, become a secure person and to be have real confidence and not fake confidence so when i look at myself now just objectively like in the camera i'm like wow this is i'm such a confident person like my body language like my facial expressions the way i speak like from how i used to be and how much more honest i am about myself and how i can just be have open dialogue with people, strangers or people on YouTube or clients or in dating, but I never used to be like that. So when I see people that have these issues that I used to have, I recognise them. 
you know, I can I can recognise them, and I'm not going around judging other people. If people don't want to change, that's their that's their choice. But it, it irritates me and annoys me when people moan and they blame and complain because that's just not being accountable for your own insecurities and fears, which is your responsibility, no one else's. So that fascinates me. That's a concept that I wanted to share. I've got that out of my system, um, and I always think it's so refreshing um, when you see someone like myself, and I know, like, in a way there, I didn't feel quite comfortable saying that about myself, because I suppose I was brought up, you know, you don't brag about yourself, but I'm, you know, I'm giving myself credit here, and I'm saying a quality that I really admire in people, and I admire in myself, what's wrong with that, it's better than me beating myself up, and saying how terrible I am, and this and that, did all that in the past, I'm sure you do that, and you're sick of it, so it's very refreshing when you get someone like me, who's very open and honest, and just genuine with who they are and what they and how they feel and what they're going through, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, and that's the people that I seem to gravitate towards on podcast shows and interviews. If I come on a show or if I watch something and I get all this, they're all too egotistical. They're not showing any vulnerability. I gen usually I switch off. I get bored. I'm like, no, nah, too fake for me. No, nah, they're giving it. They're acting like you know their shit doesn't stink. They're better than everyone. I, I, I don't buy into that. Sorry, I've got too much experience in life to be fooled by that, they may fool other people, they're not going to fool me of that, when you've got someone who's more, yeah, I love it when someone is confident in their ability, and they're outspoken, they're saying I'm the best, I'm the, yeah, that's great, I, I admire that, but equally, they're like, you know, I, I didn't have a good start, and, and I still have issues now, but I deal with them better, it's, it's just so much, who are we kidding, it's much better, and we know that, if you have an interaction with someone, if you play these games with each other, and you don't open up, you can't get to know each other, and it feels, it feels I get bored, I switch off, if I'm around someone and they're closed and hiding, I just, I can't do it, especially not at my age. And I don't even think it's an age thing. That was just like knee-jerk reaction, me saying I'm 36. I didn't enjoy that when I was 26. I, mean, I don't think I enjoyed that when I was 15. I was always quite socially aware of people and stuff. So, yeah, these are the things I think about. Um, I feel like I'm moaning sometimes, but I'm not. I'm just being passionate and I'm just being honest. And that's a big part of the teaching and why I make the videos. A lot of it's like, helping me able to get things out so you know and that's how relationships get better when, when you're honest and stuff and obviously everything can balance I'm not saying every minute you have to admit your fears and insecurities but there is an appropriate time so I think you know if you want to improve yourself and you come to this channel and you watch my videos you know I give away every video I give so much value I, I always give away for free all of the right steps principles characteristics on how to be a better person, be more confident, be more successful in all areas of life, in every area, not just for guys wanting to improve with women. That's just one area. I teach all across the board because um, I've worked in all those different areas. Another thing I'm fascinated by, it just come to me now, um, is about like relationships and things I've learned about relationships. And one of the key things I've learned about relationships, and again, I'm not here claiming to know everything because I'm not a relationship expert, so to speak. I'm a confident expert, um, you know, getting people to take action. But I've got experience and I've learned. I've had to go through a lot of the wrong relationships to get to the right relationships. And that's been with myself and other people. And I see a lot of people struggling in their relationships. And I think a key thing about relationships is, and it is challenging relationships, there's no quick fix. It's all about compatibility and chemistry. And I think a lot of the stuff on YouTube and on the internet and that's kind of encouraged and the enthusiasm in relationships is around, you know, kind of like fake it till you make it, um, you know, project what you think the person wants to see to attract them. But over time, that collapses if there's no chemistry. Like, you can play these games with one another. And we're, I suppose everyone's guilty of it to a certain extent. When you first go on a date with someone, whether you're a man or woman, you're always trying to show like the best aspects of yourself. You don't want that person to see your vulnerabilities, your insecurities, your dark side that we all have. So you, you play this game, and, and it has its place. I'm not saying it's totally wrong. And you can still play that game when you're being very honest and genuine. But and when you start dating someone a couple of months in, that starts falling apart. And then your issues come out, and their issues come out. And that's when you find out if you're compatible. Because compatible for me... It doesn't mean not having issues in a relationship. You're always going to have that. But it means that you're able to work through those issues and still love each other, communicate, connect. And I've found when I don't have that with someone, it doesn't work. 
where they, you just you can't connect with them. They just don't get you. They don't listen. You don't like the same things. You've got different goals, different visions, and that's been the real red flag for me when I know it's not going to work with someone and I'm not right for them. They're not right. And there's nothing personal with that. A lot of times, people take it personal. Like, oh, I've been rejected. I'm not good enough. And it's like no. You're just not compatible. There's there's millions of people in the world. So many people are not right for me. They, they, they're not going to get on with me. And the same for you. Especially when you're thinking of settling down with someone for the rest of your life. I have to think about that. It's different if you just want to date and have fun. Then every, anyone can be compatible to a certain extent. But when you want to spend the rest of your life with someone or a long-term relationship, it's different. So that's something I look out for now, compatibility. And that doesn't always mean, oh, I love films, you love films. That's on the surface, but I'm talking about you know chemistry, being around that person, just having that, just feeling that, being comfortable in that connection, romantically, socially, mentally, you know, just having the same values. So on the surface, yes, you know, who doesn't like movies? Who doesn't like food? Who doesn't like travel? Most people like these things, right? But underneath that, you need there needs to be a connection and needs to be this natural chemistry. And when I've had that with a woman, and even with friends or, or a client. It just goes well. There's nothing that stops it. Even if you have little, you know, arguments or little disagreements, they don't override that great love and chemistry. So I find that fascinating. God, I'm experienced, aren't I? I'm starting to realise I'm I'm becoming a veteran in this uh, industry of you know, helping people with their confidence, and I feel really proud how far I've come and the knowledge and wisdom I'm able to share with with younger people, older people. And, uh, and, I, and I, sometimes I forget, I actually forget, and this is me validating myself, not looking for approval from other people, I actually forget how confident and brave I am. I sometimes don't give myself credit. How many of you do that and relate to that? I bet I've seen all my clients doing it, where they don't give themselves credit that they deserve. They're very good at talking to women, or they're very, they've got good characters, or they've been showing up in their life, and they're not... Like they're not seeing it, and that's why it's good to have a coach so you can say, "Can you see how good you're doing?" Instead of always putting ourselves down. So I'm starting to find lately. I think that's because my self-esteem is getting better and I'm more disciplined. I'm actually noticing, and it's it's not bragging. There's a difference before people get out of their pram and say he's bigging himself up. Listen, just relax and have some uh, peppermint tea. You know, it's just me kind of realizing where I've come from and being grateful for who I am and and. And just admiring my qualities. And I've always said, I always thank my dad for installing that courage in me, that ability to just be brave and and, to, and just to step out and do what most people could do, but just they won't do it. They lose their bottle. So I admire my courage to be so um, honest uh, on camera and to be honest with myself and other people and to speak about certain truths and share my experience, to share my... Um, mistakes and my successes so that's something about relationships another thing I want to talk about this is I think this is very interesting I've really and I'm trying to explain this right so I don't want to be like misinterpreted when I was younger like any guy I really really like was obsessed and admired beautiful looking women like like my own vanity like just you know a woman who looks beautiful and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that and I, I think I overvalued that because it's just so instinctive in men to be attracted to a beautiful looking woman. We can't help it. We can't be punished for that. And if we're being punished, that's just ridiculous. It's unfair. It's unscientific. You know, we have a, these instincts. But as I've gotten older and matured and have more experience, and this is, again, this is not bragging, right? Because I don't think better than anyone. As I've looked back on my life and dated a lot of beautiful looking women, very attractive women, I don't value it as much anymore as I do a woman's character, a woman's heart, a personality. Because I've dated women who are very attractive and beautiful and, and loads of men fancy them and they really know they're beautiful. But if I'm being honest, they have not been, and this is not every woman, so please don't take out of context, they have not been fun to be around. Sometimes they're a bit too mean, a bit too all selfish. And I just think, you know what, I'm not enjoying this anymore. Yeah, you're beautiful. You have a, you have a nice figure. You've got nice eyes, lovely hair, and and it's attractive. But your character is is ugly. I'm sorry. I've got I've got to speak my mind. Your character, you're not kind. You're not thoughtful. You're not generous. I don't want to be. My mum isn't like that. And my mum's 
<laughs> my mum's a beautiful person, lovely and got lovely uh, and generous. Now, my aunties, my, my nan, I can't tolerate this. I value myself too much. And and again, if anyone tries to accuse me of, you know, any sort of um, distaste towards women, it's completely opposite. Same for having friends, male friends. So, like I said, um, it's not that, it's just, it's just maturing. And, and I was told this by more wise people when I was younger, men and women, saying to me, it's not all about looks, you know. It's not all about the beauty on the outside. I know this is very cheesy and I'm reluctant to say it. But it's not all about the beauty on the outside. It's actually about the, it actually is about the beauty on the inside. Because when you are a good person, you've got a good heart, and you are being a good person, you do appear more attractive, if that makes sense. So this whole obsession about beauty, and again, it's going to be honest, man, I don't care what people say. I struggled many years growing up at times where I'd look at myself and think, God, I'm, oh, I'm ugly, I'm not very handsome. I, I feel very insecure about that. But as I've gotten older, I actually look at myself and I see I'm like, oh, I'm actually a really handsome guy. I actually, I actually like how I look. I actually feel attractive. Does that make sense? So, you know, and then I want to stay on that line. I've dated um, women that are actually got both. And I, that's what I love when they're attractive looking and you fancy them and you're just really attracted to them. And they give you that lovely feeling in the stomach as a man. But they also... They equally have a good personality, so they're attractive on the inside, and they're, they're kind, they're nice, they're sensitive, they're, they're empathetic. And then they're the, they're the sort of woman where you want to introduce them to your mum and dad, like you trust them, you want to introduce them to your friends. So, you know, it goes, it, it works both ways, you know, and um, a lot of women will agree on this. So, that, but that's taken me many years to, to, to understand that, and I'm still understanding it, and it's, you know... I had a friend before used to say to me, you know, you always date a beautiful woman. Like, give the other woman a shot. Just because she's beautiful doesn't mean she's going to be the right person for you. And he, he was he was definitely right, 100%. But at the same time, I'm not going to, I'm not going to be one of those guys that has got, you know, has, has got animosity towards a woman because she's beautiful. That's not fair. Just because a woman is beautiful, that doesn't mean people should start attacking her, being nasty, because that's just not, that's just stupid. So there's a balance within what I'm saying. Um, and that's something that I've learned and these things get revealed to you whether you like it or not because of the times we're living in today people are so sensitive for political correctness I bet I've said about 10 things already that offend everyone that's their problem you know we have a freedom of speech I actually thought that's what de democracy is and I'm always I'm always talking about things to actually improve things you know, to make help men and women and everyone and myself as well so take it however you want it mm. And it's funny because, I don't know if you guys can relate, I've had situations before where I might not be that attracted to a woman at the start. She's, I said, yeah, she's nice, she's not bad looking, but I'm not that into her. But if I start spending time with her, and I just like being around her, she's a good person, she, she will actually start appearing to me more beautiful looking, and I will fall in love with her. So, I'm not all about looks. And it's often been said, oh, men are shallow, what they care about. It's like, no, we're not, that's a generalisation. You don't, you haven't met every man, so... You know, I'm just kind of speaking out loud, and you know, many women have told me this as well. Women, women, women have said to me, "Oh, you know, why are you dating that girl? Is it just because she's beautiful? But what is her personality like?" So, it, it goes without saying. And you know, I've met. Obviously, I'm just making a point of saying this. I'm straight. I like women, but I've met men that are really good-looking guys, and other men would think, "Oh, he he's gonna he's he's got everything going for him." But they've got terrible characters. They're very moody and insecure and selfish and not nice to be around. And they're struggling to get a relationship with a woman. They may get women looking at them. But when the woman sees their character, they're out of there. And I've met guys who, they may not be the best looking men. But they're just, you just, they're just, you just want to be around them. They're cool. They've just got that sort of personality that they're charming and, and kind. And they do well with women. So... A lot of truths I've learned, and I'm just unraveling all this experience on, onto a video camera. So it goes both ways, men and women. A lot of women and men might see someone on YouTube who's uh, a handsome looking guy who's a model, whatever, they've got a six pack and tall, all that stuff. But they might have the worst character going, and I would, don't want to be around people like that who have got a horrible character and who just is too, too far gone. Um, so. I, all, for all, all these things is just things that I've learned.
Um, we're going to end this video soon. It's gone past the 24 minute mark. When it gets 24 minutes, I'm always like, if there's enough, I've, I might add a few more final thoughts. I don't even know what I'm going to title this video, but I sometimes think these videos are better than the coaching ones <clears throat> because really all this is coaching anyway. I'm just going about it in a much more easy going way rather than going, you know, in this video, I'm going to coach you on how to be common. I sometimes get bored with that stuff. It just gets too intense and a little bit too fake and scripted. So, um, yeah, but I'm drinking peppermint tea, by the way. Um, this really settles, it really settles my stomach because I get sometimes I like irritable stomach. So, um, yeah. Um, okay, last thing, in being an introvert. Now, I know a lot of people out there, they probably go through this kind of quiet battle. I have it sometimes where they're like, oh, if people really knew that I was shy and introverted, they might kind of look down on me or might think I'm not as confident. And the truth is, I'm an introvert and I'm a proud introvert and I used to struggle with it. And people might find it hard to believe because when you see me on YouTube, see what I'm doing, it's actually very extroverted. But it initially... It comes from being an introvert so even though it's very natural for me to do this to some degree it's still unnatural because I am shy and introverted but again that doesn't mean I'm not confident very I think I, I'm not saying about myself. I think introverts are more confident than extroverts that's another controversial thing I think extroverts they hide they hide through all of their extroversion and way they wear masks they put on a show but the reality real confidence is how I'm talking now when you, it's not jumping up and down it's not shouting and making loads of loud jokes it's just being very that's human connection that's what it looks like so there's nothing wrong with being introverted what is wrong and how how I used to be which was wrong I'm saying it's wrong it was calling it for what it is when you're introverted and you don't face your fears like you stay introverted like you never make a YouTube video you won't do a public talk you won't go out and meet people but you know I just heard a successful person say that 90% or more of the billionaires and the successful people in history have all been introverts so that that makes you feel good so there's nothing wrong with being an introvert and maybe I might even title this video introvert shares his thoughts on life or, or whatever but um, and I actually I, I think I definitely I'm more attracted to introverted women and again I'm not ruling out every extrovert because I've had extroverted friends and I've gotten really well but it's just I think I just can resonate more with introverts. They're more relaxed to be around. I think they're more secure. Um, but remember, everything can balance. So I'm not saying to someone, if you're an introvert, you shouldn't work on being more extrovert. Of course, both can learn from each other. Some people have got the argument that no one is 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 totally one. A bit like in bodybuilding, where you'd have like ectomorph, mesomorph, ectomorph, mesomorph. There's another one, an endomorph. You know, you know, everyone's a bit of both. Um, but I think at heart, if I'm being honest with myself, I, I am introverted. I, I get tired with too much social interaction. Um, so they're my thoughts. Um, that's how I felt. That's what I'm learning. And I think you will. Really, I think you really like this video. A lot of people will will get it. Love the last thing before I go. Something lately that I was battling with, but I've, I think I'm getting better now. Was views on my videos. If you notice in the earlier days, my videos got a lot more views and now they, they're, they're getting a lot less views. This, is it bothering me, if I'm being honest? A little bit it's bothering me. But what's been really um, great for me is that I'm actually getting over it and now I really I really do care about quality, not quantity. Because there's videos I've got on YouTube that got 100,000 views and I don't really like the video, if I'm being honest. But people love it and that's great. And it helps people so I keep the video up. Some of these videos I do, they've got 200 views. I, I love them. I might watch some of them back, especially the boxing ones. So I think it's just the time. And I don't know, I've got... I think sometimes today drama sells. Maybe the videos back then were... But they, some of them were good. And, um, you know, that's just the way it goes. I'd rather be more genuine and help really impact people than just have loads of views. But that's not saying I don't want to get more views. But for the, for the right reasons, if that makes sense. So I'm quite confident in myself that the videos will pick up. One video will get a viral at some point. But that's not the main reason why I do them. I make the videos because I like just being honest and just doing them because I enjoy them. And I like helping people and, and just um, doing what I feel I'm blessed to do, which is to teach and help people with their confidence. 
that's why I put the videos out. So, and it's another misconception. I'm just going to share this to people. A lot of people think if they see like me on YouTube and they see a video of mine that's got 200,000 views or half a million or 80,000 because I've made loads that have gone viral, they might immediately think, oh, he's perfect, he's successful. And the truth is, no, I'm not. I'm not perfect. And just because a video's got loads of views, it doesn't actually, doesn't, it doesn't always mean the video is good. It could be a video that's just gone viral because it's people love negativity or drama. I'm not saying that I've been like that. I could have been. I'm human. But a video that's got 200 views could be better. It's way more honest. It's got great life skills in it and value. It's just that it hasn't been seen by many people. But the people that have seen it, it's really impacted them. So it's, I suppose it's impact and lesser views versus less impact but loads of views like empty calories i don't know that that's some of my thoughts anyway so if you enjoyed this video you can choose to like like it if you want i don't even i don't even care if people don't like the video fine if you want to subscribe great if not i'm not going to be like forceful like do this do this, subscribe it's like i've gotten to a point where sometimes even that doesn't feel natural it's just let you know whatever fine all right so i thought i'd share that something new um and um, yeah, become fearless. I hope this video helped you. It really helped me to make it and share with you life lessons. And if you if you want to, let me know in the box below. I have a conversation with you. We can extend on this. And let me know if anything helped you. If you relate to any of these things, I'm 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 certain that you do. I've talked about a lot of stuff. All right, become fearless. Bye.